Instead, at Watermark, many visitors to this town are familiar with Watermark. It's a gorgeous space. They've donated the space to us, and um, we are grateful uh, to be here today. It's a gorgeous location overlooking the ocean. The beach is packed today. Um, now, we have another, we have another visitor. All right. Don't worry about the sheet. They gave me these cheat sheets, but we're going we're gonna to welcome our next guest. Sir, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Good morning. My name is Greg Hobson. I'm the chairman of the Asbury Park Housing Authority. That's excellent. Tell me about the Asbury Park Housing Authority. Asbury Park Housing Authority, we've just embarked on a wonderful plan to rebuild 104 units, which used to be a project. We're putting 104 townhouses into the community. That's, what's the timeline for that? 18 months. Eight, that's a, that is an amazing timeline. Well, the environmental has already been done. Um, we've done the asbestos removal now. We're forging ahead with the demolition date, which is coming in about 30 days. As soon as the demolition is done, we're coming right up with the townhouses. So th this is a really exciting aspect to the town. Um, just tell me in general, aside from that project, um, your thoughts about affordable housing in Asbury Park? Um, my thoughts on affordable housing, affordable housing is desperately needed throughout Asbury Park, not just on the east side or the west side, it's needed throughout the community. And given the climate that things that are going on around the country, we're gonna need more affordable housing because we're gonna have more people heading in our direction that are gonna need help. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, how many years have you lived here? I've lived here for 10 years now. Great, and why, what keeps you here? Why does Asbury Park, uh, just feel like a special place to live to you? It's a community. It's a community of people that, that not only care for each other, you know, they work together, and whether it's a catastrophe, a low season or a high season, you know, you see a collaboration of people, and you see all, all ethnicities in the community, and no one hates anybody. We all try to get along here. I've been here so long, I've served six years on the Board of Education, so m my plight here, is I love the children, I love the people. I voted for you. <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, Thank you. But, but it is. This is a community. Uh, it transcends all races. Like, th earlier this week, I, I fell off my bike. I had an accident. Mm -hmm. And the showing, people came out of their houses rushing, out of every house, every race, every ethnicity came and helped me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just felt that uniqueness in this area that didn't matter who you were. Everyone just came out to help. Well, I'll give you a, a for instance. About a week ago, I also serve as the chaplain for the police department. About a week ago, I get a phone call from my senior chaplain. Um, we called it a DOA. Go into the house, 30-year-old woman, found dead in her bed. Mother's there. Well, instead of leaving the mother, I stayed with her until 8 o'clock. Transported in my vehicle from Asbury to Tom's River, where she had family. Not because it was something I had to do, not because it was something that was expected of me, but that's the love the community of Asbury Park shows each other and anyone coming into this community. So if you're not from around here, do yourself a favor. Come visit us. Come enjoy what we have. Um, you might, some might come only in the summertime, but there's a lot to do all year round here in Asbury Park. It certainly is. All right, Mr. Hobson, it's great to, to meet you officially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you right. for all your support. And anything I can do to help you, the organization, or the community, don't hesitate to reach out Thank to you. me. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. All right. Disappeared for a second. I am back. Oh, here is our next guest. Hello, sir. All right. All right. Why don't you introduce yourself? Steve Roddy. Right. Uh, I do. Uh, I have a publishing company here you in need Manhattan. To read this? You need to no, see I just wanted to make sure if you were going to check it out for any questions and then, uh, if you had any uh, like you know, additional you jokes that you can make off of it, oh, which I'll would have been good. But you just got the you just got the I sheet, just got it. They didn't so you can't any even make any jokes. No, I can make jokes. Okay, I mean, good. Like, anyway, so I run a, a publishing yeah. company here. It's mostly for the advertising industry. Um, I didn't mean to do it. It came out of nowhere. I had a good job in Manhattan, working in Madison Avenue, but uh, I came down here. And uh, the thing about Asbury Park is inspiration, and it, it's it's inspired me. I didn't mean to do it. You did. The publishing company just Listen. came out of me. So this it was just serendipitous. Uh, yes, it did. It did. It like did. I, I like word. to see. It's a long word. It's a long word. Long word. And uh, or, or kismet, similar, kismet? similar. Kismet? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Great musical. Yes, sure. Serendipity was not a musical. Um, it's also a store that sells candy, isn't it? 
I don't care. Anyway, so uh, yeah, Roddy Report is the is the website that's been paying the mortgage, and then uh, just this weekend we launched uh, MadWallStreet.com, which is when Madison Avenue sees a campaign that's so awful, that is such a failure, that it's going to stock the tank. I mean, tank the stock. I said that backwards. Um, we'll, I'll be reporting on that, and I just launched that on Saturday. So uh, yeah, we're and doing so a the publishing company. Is entirely out of your home, or is it a storefront? Um, it, it's not a storefront. Or, 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 it's not a storefront. Office. I have an office in in in, in town, okay. um, but it's completely so, run, and, and and all my support people are are local because there's a ton of talent in Asbury Park. I got to tell you, there's a ton of doers in this town. So that's going to lead to two questions for you. Um, first. Yeah. Talk, talk about the doers quickly, but then I have a question about running an office in town too. But tell me about what makes the people that make Asbury Park special. Well, I just think that people come down here and they, I don't know, if you stand in that water and you just look out there, ideas come to your head and then all of a sudden you just start doing them. People just start doing them in this town and it's just wonderful. And it's very, again, very inspiring. And uh, my whole experience down here, it's been... Uh, Ten years so since I've been down here. You've found um, talent down here uh, of a lot of different sorts because a lot of people come down here from the city uh, with a lot of skill sets. Yeah, technical. Uh, well, f f from from my perspective as an advertising executive, post, I've, uh, it, you know, I'm looking for creative and I'm looking for tech, and uh, <laughs> there's a here. boatload. There's a here. boatload of that here. So now tell me about running a small business. We hear a lot from restaurant owners, uh, shop owners, but tell me about having an office that is not selling anything to the public. Uh, what is it like uh, to forming an office space here? Um, is, how welcoming is it? How easy is it to maintain? It depends on what your attitude is, but if your attitude's mellow and you want to be mellow, it, it's easy. You seem pretty mellow. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy. If you want to fight the powers that be, well, you go ahead and do that. Yeah. If you want to bother your brain with that, I, I, why would you do that? I, um, so, but uh, it's, 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 pr it's very welcoming, and like I said, the talent is here. And even, you know, we have colleges nearby where you can get, get intern talent, and, you know, these interns... They know 10 times as much as you and I do as far as actually pumping it out on, on, on whatever software platform is going on. So uh, that, that's also great. So we have the university talent. We have the I Manhattan talent. Feel older right now. Well, what are you going to do? You got, you know, we're, we're both grayish. Ish. Ish. Okay. Uh, ish. Yeah, I think I might have a little more than you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it's all right. So, yeah, so that's the story. Yeah, I didn't mean to make this company. It just happened from the inspiration of this town. And you, you're a homeowner here as well? Yes, I have a, I'm right, I'm on the west side. Okay. Which is just a wonderful, it's, the, it, it's not the wild, wild west, but it's definitely the new frontier it of is. Asbury Park. And uh, that's the only other place that it can go. It's and true. I'm psyched, I'm psyched about it. That's great. Well, I'll be over later for cocktails. Awesome. And uh, Steve, it was great to meet you in person. All right. Rock on. Right. Rock on. All right. See you later. Best of luck. All right. If you tuned in late, we are high atop the First Ave Pavilion, Asbury Park, New Jersey, talking about why this is a special place to live um, and work and own a business. Uh, we're at Watermark, where many visitors have come to sip a libation. Uh, they've given us this space for the day, so we're spending a few hours here talking with the movers and shakers who make Asbury Park special. And next up is a good friend, moving and shaking, <laughs> Richard Schlossback. We are talking about restaurants. We haven't talked to too many restaurateurs yet. Yeah. No, you might be the first. I'm the only one um, that gets uh, like 20 minutes off Marilyn today. let you out today. Is she coming as well? No, as well? she has to cook. Her and Scott oh, are go. cooking. Right. Well, yeah. Richard, you, own, you have uh, owned and managed several restaurants in town. Yeah. Um, tell us now, your, your sole establishment here now is Langosta, although you own an entire pavilion now. <laughs> I wish we owned the pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, we have Langosta Lounge, APYC, our kind of surf bar lightly salted, our surf show, and Pop's Garage. Yeah. No, they've all kind of been there for a while. Yeah, mm. it, just, it just seems to, I don't know, every summer it seems to add one more place on. I don't know. 
Yeah, we do have Russell and Betts up in Rumson, yes. which kind of works the opposite of Asbury. But tell me about Asbury. Why do you love it here? What made you both move from Lavalette to here to start some businesses and, and then keep expanding? Well, I grew up in Belmar, my sister too. Uh, we both went to Asbury Park High School. So we know Asbury for years and years and years. My, one of my first jobs was in that parking lot across from Langosta, the Albion Hotel. I was a busboy, right? So, you know, Asbury's been in my heart for years. You know, I've lived in Manhattan most of my life, but came back to help my sister open Langosta for a few months. And now it's uh, nine years later. That's great. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it's, it seems to be the new town that you're focused on. Um, you know, since you are in some other towns, but Asbury Park seems to be your home base. Yeah. Um, but why is that? What, what's special about Asbury Park in general? Well, it was great to start, you know, in 08, when it all started to push out. And, you know, it's nice to be one of the, the frontiers people, you know, and, and watch it grow and grow and grow. You know, uh, restaurants, especially, I find in Jersey, are take time but Asbury like popped and surprised us all and still surprised us every year you know so it's it's challenging but it's it's so exhilarating you know uh, yeah well Richard I really appreciate it we appreciate you coming by I wish you the best of luck with Langosta you don't need it because it is a phenomenal place to be um, I eat there as much as we I can. need parking we parking, need parking. <laughs> Well, the people seeing this might not be able to uh, realize that want or need, but uh, <laughs> we will keep fighting the good fight and making yes. some change. We've got a lot of movers and changes that will make the change. And it's changing. It's good to see you. Oh, no, good All to right, see you. All right, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. I don't need this one. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Come on in welcome. Hi. Christian Fusconaro. Sir. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. I'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> no, we're rolling. We're, we're live. Rolling. Okay, then. So tell me, sir, this is an exciting gentleman here. He has moved, I want you to say it yourself, but he has recently moved a statewide nonprofit down to our town. Uh, we're honored to have you. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about your history yeah. here. Well, first of all, I'm so glad that you're doing this because um, Brett is a Garden State Equality member um, and gives back to the community a lot. But uh, Garden State Equality is New Jersey's largest LGBT organization. Our headquarters were in Montclair. We retained a small office there, but we moved our statewide headquarters here to Asbury Park, the city with the largest population of LGBT couples in the state. Um, and not only that, but it's in a central location for everyone else. So now everyone doesn't need to drive you know, an hour or two hours up to North Jersey. They can just come right here to the beautiful Jersey Shore. The, the level of advocacy you do every day, uh, the emails you send out is phenomenal. It's, it's, it's staggering how many tentacles you have out there uh, for the variety of issues. So I, I, with that small staff, I don't know how you keep it up. We have a, a lot of people think we have a large staff. We have 150,000 members on our email list, um, but right now we're only a staff of three full-time people. and we do work in New Jersey schools. There are over 600 school districts in New Jersey. I have one staff person going into schools doing training. So th there's really a lot of room to expand here. And um, I'm hoping over the next year, we're gonna double our staff um, and continue doing the work in schools, anti-bullying efforts, going into hospitals and doing um, LGBT clinic trainings. We just opened up the first full service clinic at Robert Wood Johnson Somerset and much more. So, um, and with the small staff, you rely on a, a big base of volunteers. So, as you said, we've got the highest number of LGBT couples. Um, what sort of welcoming and, and help have you gotten from the community physically? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of times people go to our website and fill out our volunteer form, and um, that's great, but issues will come up, like a trans person will be attacked in Asbury, we need to have a rally right away, or um, we need to get a mailing out because um, something just happened in the legislator, uh, legislature and we need to react. And so what's great about being in Asbury, and you're one of the people that have done this, is we'll just put something out on social media and say, we need volunteers right now at our offices on Main Street, and then all the Asbury locals come there and help right away. And I don't think you get that type of community anywhere else 
um, in this state, but probably across the country as well. And, and you live here as well now? Um, I am nearby? not quite an Asbury Park resident, but I live nearby um, and I keep on working my way in. I, I work and play here and I will hopefully soon live here as well. It, it feels like he lives here because he is uh, here every day of the week. I don't know. They don't let me go. Yeah, so Christian Fuscarino said right. it right this time. Yes, you did. I did. Thank you. And I really appreciate the work you're doing. We all appreciate it. So thank, thank you. you sir. All right. All right. Okay, we are continuing with our uh, with our list of Asbury Parks movers and shakers. Here is a phenomenal man who gets every aspect as a business owner, as a community member, mover and shaker. Scott Esselone. How are you? Do Very you good, sir. Hold this? Hold oh, sure. thank you very much. Dapper. Thank you. Well, I, I figured I'd dress up two, for the occasion. Two guys in a row <laughs> are making me look like a schlub, but I'm baking out here. No, no, you know, you're smart. So. You're smart. I, this, isn't, this is not too bright. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, sir, tell me about yourself, the, the, well, your business in town, and, and why you love it here. You know what? Can I, yeah, I want to start with a warning. Okay. Don't come to Asbury Park. You will fall in love with it. It, it's it's you get here and that's what happened to me uh 2007 we came here we were visiting fell in love um bought a house i live here in asbury um and then started a business so i'm the co-owner of words bookstore downtown um and have just loved it and would love to see this just blossom and grow with great people like you living in town um and a number of the people that you've seen come up it's it's this phenomenal phenomenal community and there is a part of me that would like to keep the doors closed to paradise uh, now that we're here, but I feel it's, it's paradise important. Paradise meaning the town, not the club right across the street. We're not trying to shut that down. <laughs> right. We, we love paradise. And so, so one of the other things we really believe in here too, and this is for business owners to understand is, we want this to be really business friendly. So there are two groups downtown, I'm, I'm co-chair of one of them, and it's the Asbury Park Business Advisory Forum. And we're working with the town council to make it easy for businesses to come here and open. So, um, and one of the great things, I've got to share with this, we did a survey of businesses of why they feel they succeeded and it was easy to open in downtown. You know what the number one answer was? The other businesses helped them out. And so that's the kind of community we have here in Asbury. And we'd love to see more great businesses come to the downtown. We do, you know, I notice um, in this town, not only is the chamber exceptionally active uh, with a lot of Very active much so. members. Yeah. But when you go downtown, the stores have been there for a long time. There's not a lot of turnover each year right. with a lot of closures. You know, there's typically a few, but, uh, but Year after year, we see the same small businesses thriving. Yeah. Uh, and like, like words, you've had a independently owned bookshop for how many years now? Uh, we're into our ninth year. That's, that's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, I, and I think that's part of this town. Yeah. I think that's what makes this town great. Yeah. You know, and individuals like you that support us. So we, we always do appreciate right, that. We always try to shop local. Yeah. So Absolutely. Hey, it's, it's this, you know what? Our job is to make this the greatest small city for arts and culture on the East Coast. And that's what we want to do. Well, I thank you, sir. You're welcome. Right. It's great so seeing you, you, as you always. Shake your hand, take the <laughs> mic. Yep, that was good, All good right. turn. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Scott. Scott Asselone from Words, Asbury Park. And we've got another guest who I might recognize. This is Troy T. Boom. I don't need that, I know this guy. We're, yeah, give me that. Yeah, another one. Can That's I ask a it. Question? You're asking a question. Do He's they already. Know that you're not wearing shoes. No, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't know that I'm not wearing pants either. But uh, it is hot. I'm stuck here, wired up. I can't take any breaks, and I'm baking here in the sun. I came fully dressed, and slowly I kept changing. Uh, I don't need this mic. You need this mic. This is Troy Tibum from. Cure. Cure. Cure Wellness Studios. Look at that. 412 Bond Street, Asbury Park. So several years ago, you moved here. Yeah. Bought a house. Yeah. And then took an amazing <laughs> structure that had been a printing business and turned it into a boutique spa. That so you don't need to interview you know, me. You can just I talk know, about you us. You can just leave. You can just leave. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about it. Yeah, it was a printing press for, I think, maybe 100 years. Yeah. Family-owned business. It looked like a print press. It was falling apart. The city inspectors actually came in and said, you're fixing this? This is a teardown. And I said, nah, it's going to be great. And it's a beautiful spa. It came out great. 
So uh, tell me about the formation of a small business in town. What kind of support did you get from the community? Um, well, I kind of knew that we needed more for this community, and um, there's a great spa in town, but I, I knew it was full. It was only three rooms. We wanted to build something a little bit bigger. We wanted to add yoga. We, turned, we also did personal training. Um, the community kind of made me feel confident, and the city helped too. Like, um, we're an urban enterprise zone. I was encouraged early on from City Hall to apply for that. It helped me um, open with less expense and some ease. Tell, tell the viewers that what, what the Urban Enterprise Zone Oh, price Urban price. Enterprise Zone, I think there's like 20 in New Jersey and they're uh, reduced sales taxes. I think there's some things with unemployment insurance that are beneficial. Um, and uh, and uh, purchasing things. So like when we were building out Cure and all the thousands of dollars I spent on things in stores like Home Depot and, and furniture stores, we're all tax free. So that all helps. Phenomenal. And uh, how about keeping the business going? Are you getting so we're in our third summer. This is our best summer. We keep growing year on year. Um, like I said, we're up to five room. We have five rooms, so um, every room has been in play now um, for many weeks. Usually weekends or bad weather days in the summer are our busiest. Our yoga studio is popular. Personal training is popular. So um, it's doing really well. Living here, you love. Love you it. Love yeah, I love it. Resident? That's why I opened the places. Uh, when we moved to the New York area, we we're living in Man um, near Manhattan and, and had Manhattan corporate jobs and I hated it. So when we got our beach house and moved here, uh, I needed to figure out something to do. So I decided to invest in a business. Great. Well, sir, all right, we're going to keep going. We have a bunch of other guests coming, but Troy, it was great to see you. Thank you. You too. We appreciate your presence in the town. Thank you very much. One of the people that makes it special. Thanks, Brett. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Hello, How sir. Are How are, How are you? you? Oh, we hug. We in Zasbury Park. We hug everyone. I know this guy too. We don't need you. They filled out these sheets for me. I, I get them on the spot. I'm not going to read a, a biography now. When we're streaming live from Facebook, this is John Yay. McEwen. He is one of the state's go-to people for theater. Introduce yourself. Yeah, Andy, he's a resident of Asbury Park, so we're honored to have him in our town and for everything he does for the state. Thank you. All Great right. to be here. How long have you lived in town now? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. That's a while. And, yeah. Um, why do you love it? I love the diversity, the, um, the excitement. Uh, it's a city feeling. We just happen to have an incredible beach. Uh, the people are great here, really, really friendly. Uh, and it's nice to watch it really coming back. And it's sticking this time, which is so exciting now, to be a part of that. As, as the head of a statewide organization, um, do you find that in your day-to-day your -day -day daily work, uh, that Asbury Park comes into play? Does it stick out in any way for that? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, we had a theater here at one point, and we really would love to bring back a professional theater company here in Asbury. I think there's a lot of interest. Uh, there's some great theaters in the area, but we really feel Asbury Park would be ideal for a professional theater company, so fingers crossed that that will, uh, will happen. And uh, my organization, the New Jersey Theater Alliance, which serves 32 equity theaters throughout the state, uh, we actually hosted an international conference of organizations that do similar work that we do that serve theaters from around the country, Canada, London, they all wanted to come to Asbury Park. So we hosted them here at the Asbury Hotel back uh, in uh, May, right before Memorial Day. And they were you know, completely blown away. Yeah. And it was that week in May that felt like summer, like 90 degree temperatures. It was perfect. It's a good time uh, to uh, show yeah. the city to me. Yeah, right? they, they loved it and uh, want to definitely come, come back. They picked right up on uh, why we love it here so much. That's great. And when we had a theater, and, and even though we don't have a, a full-time theater right now, it's still a vibrant arts community. Oh, so yeah. The music here, uh, the galleries, uh, no matter where you go, there's arts and culture around, um, from the boardwalk to the sidewalk to, uh, you know, you've got Independent House, you've got Music Lives, you've got uh, Lake House, you've got, there's just so much here, and there's really something for, for everybody, which is really nice. And even I should note, I don't know if you can all hear it right now, but even as we're up here on the second floor on the boardwalk, there's music going on right on the boardwalk, and this happens. <laughs> 24 hours yep. a day almost. 24 Even 7. Late at night, you can hear someone playing. Uh... <laughs> Hello, Patricia Zangle. Is, uh, we've got people commenting, and one of them just might be my mother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I love you. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Always can count on mom, right? And I love you all for uh, tuning in for so long. John McEwen, it is great to see you. Thank you for everything you do for theater in the entire state. Uh, but thank you for being a part of Asbury Park ah, as well. My pleasure. My right. pleasure. Enjoy thank the day. You. Thank you, sir. Take care. Okay. All right. Next, we've got, I don't need that either. Let's pick up. <laughs> I'm dropping things. I'm shedding things everywhere. We have got another hug. Love it. Is my mic still on? We're at uh, <laughs> my niece and nephew are watching as well. I love it. We have got a very special person here. This is Father Bob, who is not only respected for, well, you're respected for so many reasons. Um, introduce yourself and tell me just how many organizations you are a part of these days. Well, I'm. Oh, uh, and come closer to come, me. Come, they wanna, oh, they oh, keep oh, this, oh, okay, they good. Want okay, a tight good. Shot. Okay. Well, I'm the director of the center of, in Asbury Park, which is right here on Third Avenue in Asbury Park. I also, at the present time, am pastor of a church in Monmouth Beach. Those are my two big things at this point. It's, uh, the work you do at the center. Tell me, tell me about everything that the center does. Well, the center began 25 years ago when Asbury was a very different place than it is today. You wouldn't have seen all these people on the beach or on the boardwalk. Uh, but it uh, provides support services initially for people living with HIV and AIDS, as well as uh, 25 people living with us, formerly homeless, living with AIDS. And uh, so that's basically what it is. But what it's also become is a wonderful community of people. Uh, we have you know, the folks who are in need, some of the poorest of the poor, and we have, you know, 70 or 80 volunteers who, who uh, you know, work with them, feed them, heal them, and do all of that. So it becomes a wonderful community, a vibrant community in the midst of this larger community in Asbury Park. One of the things I love, and I've done that with my mother who's watching right now, uh, you welcome people in the community to come and cook in your kitchen right, right. to feed the residents. And that was one of the most rewarding things we've done, and I can't wait to do it again. Good, 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 good. Um, That's fun. But it, it's great because the community gets involved. Right. Um, and the, the center is beautiful. It's a beautiful space. Uh, and your vision has really kept it going for so many years. And so many people that have come and become part of it. You know, at that uh, weekend cook thing has been a fun thing. Uh, uh, it started, we had a weekend cook that we paid, mm -hmm. and he got sick and he had to leave, and so we started looking for volunteer chefs, and it's been amazingly successful, people like you coming in and, and doing that, and, and this way the residents love it because it's something different, they see new people, and, it, and again, it just enhances the community that we are. Now, on a personal level, you're a resident of Asbury Park now. Yes. Um, tell me about why you love living here. I've always loved living here. I've uh, been here for most of those 25 years. I've had a place in Asbury Park, and I guess it's because it's such a diverse community. I was talking to somebody earlier today who said, she said, I can't imagine living anywhere else because I, I couldn't live in, a live in a homogeneous kind of a community anymore, and that's how I feel. Uh, you know, everybody's here of all sorts and all types, and, uh, and it's one community. That's great. Well, we appreciate everything you do for the town. Thank you. Uh, and for the state and beyond. Good. Um, thank you. Thanks Good. for everything. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are live. We are broadcasting from the First Ave Pavilion. It is Labor Day today. I'm wishing all of you a happy Labor Day. We're, still, we're not ending, we're still going. I just wanted to reintroduce myself in case, uh, in case you tuned in late. We're at Watermark on the Asbury Park Boardwalk. And um, I'm Brett Colby, and I'm joined now by some representatives from the Asbury Park Music Foundation. Is that right? Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourselves? I'm Rose Montana. Okay, what's your title there? Um, I'm a volunteer, and I live in Asbury Park. Wonderful. And I'm Jim Lenskold. I'm the president of the Asbury Park Music Foundation. Fantastic. And uh, who wants to tell me a bit about uh, what you do in town? I'll tell about the foundation, then Rose can tell about all the great things that are happening, great. too. So uh, the Asbury Park Music Foundation has been a big part of the turnaround with Asbury Park going back years, making sure that music is a key part of that. You know, as much as there's been great success and uh, the music scene's thriving here, we still have work to do because we've got the West Side and we're try trying to tie them in with youth programs and other things that are going on there, too. Great. Uh, tell me about those programs. Um, some of the events that we have coming up are um, Thursday night. We have something at um, uh, the brewery, Dark, Dark City Park, Brewery. Park brewery. Park brewery. Right. right. And uh, we're going to be at the Oyster Fest, too, where we're going to sell our T-shirts. Great. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wonderful. 
I'll buy one. Yeah, I got one. We have we have ladies now in black and white. Do you have them in small because today they didn't have. Oh. Swimming in this. Yes, we do. And we have tie dye now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Very, very. Uh, and this is a big part of the, you know, the, a lot of what we're doing is fundraising, so the shirts are part of that. 100% of the proceeds go toward the youth programs. So we've got um, several youth programs. We've got scholarships to Lake House Academy that goes to certain kids in the neighborhood. We've got the Hip Hop Institute at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we've got um, some things happening now in the Asbury Park Public Schools. Brand new program called Voices, getting some talent there so that we start surfacing it, right? It's that we got to think about the next generation, too. Right. So. Live in town. I have an office here in town, but I live outside of town. All right. Roses. Yeah, I live in Asbury Park. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so, I do. Um, and you can answer it too. But what, what makes it a special place to, to be? Oh, uh, the beach is wonderful. I live right right on the ocean, and uh, and I love going to the venues where there's music. Right. That's that's my big thing. Yeah, so how many years have you been here? Um, I've been in the city of Asbury f now, this time for uh, about five years. Right. Wonderful. Well, we're, we're grateful for the work that you do. Um, thank you both for coming by. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we wish thank you the best of luck us. with the fundraisers and save me a small. Absolutely. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, uh, thank yeah. you. I'll definitely buy one. Thank, well, thank you. you. We're going to be online pretty soon, too, good. so yeah, yeah. that would be good. Well, thank good. you. Post it's been a pleasure we'll, uh, being here. Uh, thank you very right. much. Right. Very nice. Keep the music very live. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right, I don't need that. I don't need that. I know this lady. John, John, come here, hold this, yeah, hold this. We got, we got this gorgeous lady. Oh, yes, we're gonna, we're gonna liven this up. Come on, woo! I am joined now by one of Asbury Park's Tom. Yeah. I'm a king. You are, my Majesty. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, Tom. My darling, this is for those of you. You should know this woman. This is Jen Hampton. She is. This is for those of you. You should know this woman. This is Jen Hampton. She is one of the. I don't know how to describe you, but. The, the core, the nucleus of the Asbury Park visual arts scene. Is that good? I like that. The little atom. <laughs> the I'm like, just the boy. It's like I just won't give up. I don't know what that's called. Not only the Energizer that, Bunny. Right? The Energizer <laughs> Bunny. This lady does arts. not quit. Uh, and she stays charming throughout. She has operated so many establishments, <laughs> including Asbury Lanes, uh, which many of you watching will have heard of Arby or have visited. Loves, Arby, Arby Loves. Arby Loves. So, um, so tell me a bit about just your, uh, too many businesses to mention. She does own an art gallery right now, Parlor Gallery, we'll yes. plug that. Yes, we'll plug Parlor so, Gallery, 717 Cookman Avenue. <laughs> fantastic shows, but tell me, so you're important here to tell me about the overall arching, overarching vision of the art mass Park. Well, I think that for me, it's one of those, it's a very selfish need, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I just, I, I can't imagine, we have this sort of historic past that has beautiful architecture and has this like super overwhelming music past that when I first moved here, I couldn't believe like, how did I never hear of this? How did, how did this miss my radar? So for me, arts is a hand in hand thing and I didn't see a lot of visual arts represented. I'm sure there was me at in 1962 that wanted the same thing. You know, I think we are very many tribe that just keeps, but. So for me, um, it started with Asbury Lane's understanding there is an artistic community here that um, found a home here, and I wanted to do whatever I could to sort of grow that, that tribe or that family of artistic people. What you do is phenomenal. The turnout at your shows is amazing. You, you draw, I mean, you hear art galleries and, and like, you know, yeah, not, not many people gallery. walk into them. They but don't. When she does, <laughs> but when she does a, an event or a show or an opening, it's packed. And it's, uh, I think it's curiosity. I think that a lot of people, for me, I didn't, I know people don't, is, even though we're in the shadow of New York City, which is challenging for the arts here, um, our local community is really curious about it all. And I think that it's important to give, I want people to come here and have an unexpected ex adventure. And I think that that's sort of what Asbury people, I hear all the time, like, oh, I had no idea. Because I want to recreate that feeling of when I first discovered it, like, how did this happen? How does no one know about this, right. you know? And so tell me really quickly, mm -hmm. aside from the arts, just about the people in the town, just what makes it a, a special place to, to live and work? 
Well, I feel like what's great about Asbury is that even though we're a city, it's definitely a small community of people that are all very enthusiastic about each other's product projects. We might not see each other a lot, but we all keep tabs. Like, I haven't seen you forever, but I know what you're doing. And so I think that the beauty of Asbury is that you have this sort of um, community within a sort of very urban setting. And I'm sure, I, I don't know, it's the first place I've planted seeds. So I, I don't have anything to compare it to. I just knew that I call it the disease. I caught it when I got here, and I just haven't let go of it. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of us. Right. So I think that you know, a lot so. of us have found that whatever that is. I don't. I don't have a better name. I, there's probably a more positive word than disease, but uh, mojo. I don't know. You know, it's like. You, but we could say it's infectious. Right? It's infectious. Right. Uh, yeah, right? it's infectious. Which is still a little scary. But, yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah. still nice. Anyway. All right, darling, I have to keep moving. Yep. But it was amazing to see you it's as always. It's always good to and see you. Thank you. Thank for you for all, all your you nice do. adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're running behind schedule because I'm I'm talking too long with people. Hi, Hi Danny there, McKee. Sir. Nice to Hi, meet you, Danny. Nice to meet you. And who do we have here? Roy. Hi, Warren. Xavier. Nice to see you. Is Xavier? Here? How you doing? Hey, JR. Hey, JR. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And we are from the Little League. Absolutely. Yes. Come on in. I want you all to be seen. They don't need to see okay. more of me. There you all go. Yes. Right there. there. I think that's perfect, right? Yes. All right. Tell me about the Little League. Well, the Little League, we've been chartered since 1955. We really started a big comeback in about the year 2005 and have been building it ever since. In the meantime, we have lots of good activities besides the games that we play. We usually play a 16-game schedule. And, um, but throughout the year, we have a lot of different activities. Uh, summer camp in Williamsport. We take some of the kids to Florida in, at Christmas time for a, uh, a camp down there. And we go to the Chris Kindle Mark in, in uh, Pennsylvania, Probably for instance, a lot of, a lot of things, a lot any of fundraising, fundraisers? yes. Any fundraisers right now? Mm, not at the moment. Not our, right our, oh, I could have plugged it on. Well, our big fundraiser starts in November, okay. okay, where we write to people and ask them to support us. All right. And that's very important. Uh, if people want to support us, they can always go to our website Good. at Asbury Park Little League. As, uh, if you Google Asbury Park Little, Little, Little League, it'll come okay. up. Uh, maybe the uh, guys can tell you a little bit about uh, summer camp. So when we go to Florida, it's like we meet Doyle. Like he's he he used to be the head of the baseball instructor for the Colorado Rockies, but he retired, and so we go down there for a week, and like he teaches us setting, and then he has his other friends that like do pitching and infield and outfield, and we like run the bases, and it's the. Uh, Detroit Tigers Spring Facility. Wow. Um, yeah, turn uh, a little toward the camera too. Um, and uh, summer camp, uh, we uh, go down there and we like improve and we go there to have fun. We have uh, games and we like show them our struggles and we get better at them. And um, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the Little League World Series Stadium. And I want to thank my coach, Danny McKay, because uh, he done a lot for us. And um, he just makes us have fun and stuff. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, I started uh, coaching in 2002 and became yeah. president in 2005. Yeah, and you live so, in town? Yeah, right, right here, yeah. Great. Yeah. What, uh, what do you love about living here? Uh, it's, all I gotta do is look out here. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's beautiful. This is a beautiful day in Asbury Park, it's, it's, uh, and we we have uh, you know good people. The, the, and we try to you know there's a lot of renovation going on here, but for me we got to try to work with our young people and and improve the town uh, from the you know the bottom up, yeah. and uh, that's that's my goal. Yeah, and, yeah. And Jayon, you want yeah. to talk about uh, the games? Um, we have 16 wow. games during the season. and 16 games? Mm -hmm, each better. Every year we get better and better. Great. And we catch the ball well. I'm a first talk base. Talk like you're in the ball field. Talk loud. Okay, I'm a first baseman. And every, he's a center fielder. 
He's a catcher and an infielder. How are we doing? 10 and 6. Nope. 10 and 6. Right. And, in middle school, we do good too. And we catch the ball, do well, hit the ball well. And we hope to make a college one day and be on TV so you can see us and do go to the major leagues and that's it. Well, that's great. The camp, the camp sounds like a good way to hone your... Oh, can I talk about the donation? Sure, talk about the donations quickly, but then I gotta go. All right, okay. um, yeah. uh, we are really thankful for the donations and we do a lot with the donations. That's what brings us to summer camp and Doyle baseball. And we could get more equipment and like better jerseys every year. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good, we support so many causes in town, but this is a good one because a lot of us believe in the schools and we want to keep improving everything for you guys. We'd like to give you a, an official AP hat. Wow. There you go. I don't have anything There you like go, this. there you go. Now you have one. I love it. Now, you, now you're official. Wow. <laughs> I love it. There you go. There, I got to bend that a little, right? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Right, right. That's thank very you very nice much. Of you. Right. Thank, you, thank you. Thanks, thank guys. You. I give right. you a lot of credit for the work thank you're doing year-round. Thank you, year Xavier. Nice to see you again. Yeah. All right. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Go. All right. Thank All right, you. Thank you. guys. Take care. Thank you Best very much. Best of luck with the season. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the hat, too. Thank you. Debbie Delisa. How are you, my dear? Good. How are you? Good. Now we're going from sports back to music. This is a legend in town, Miss Debbie Delisa. She is manager, owner, uh, owner, past what owner, you manager now. Now she's managing the Wonder Bar, the legendary Wonder Bar. Tell me about yourself. Uh, we took over the Wonder Bar in 2002, Lance Larson and myself, when it was just an abandoned building. While Bruce was here filming The Rising at Convention Hall, we saw the potential in it, and we here we are today. We have a great business. We have a huge improvement to our city. It's an amazing transformation. I feel like Asbury Park was an old soul. It had its heyday. It had its um, troubled days. We had a lot of devils come along between us. But all the angels and all the citizens and all our new community friends in the LGBT, the arts, the music, and just even people coming in every day from out of town, it's made such a resurrection that it's incredible. You, and you're incredible. This Thank you. This woman is tireless. Uh, tell me, you know, the, the bar is legendary. The programming is nonstop. Absolutely. Uh, I know a ton of people with pets come to Yappy Hour. Yappy Hour is the best. We've been doing it 12 years, and people from all over the country, it's internationally known, everyone loves it, the pets socialize, the people socialize, and it's just such a good aura, and it brings people in, and a lot of people have told me they've moved to Asbury Park because of Yappy Hour. That's, that's amazing. It, it is, uh, I hear about Yappy Hour, I don't own a dog, but I hear about it all the time, and I always, think of you and get a smile on my face whenever thank you so much and the best thing about yappy hour is we're able to use our space and do benefits for all the different animal rescues we do it for the bulldog rescue pugapalooza with officer connie breach at 412 dogs this year and that's the main objective is to raise money and make awareness of helping other animals so uh, tell me just about the asbury park residents in general the residents and the visitors just why is it a special place Oh my goodness, the residents are amazing. They've supported all of us through the years, through the bad times. You could always count on the residents of Asbury Park to have your back. The police department is incredible. The fire department, our council, our, our judge, Dan Benedetto. everyone just comes together. There's no friction, there's no hate, there's no animosity. People are just here to make sure that Asbury Park will always be the jewel of the shore. Love you for all the work you do. Thank you. Me. I love you. you. And let's hear you sing sometime. <laughs> sometime, not today. Okay. My day off singing. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me.